Hello, beautiful. I'm so glad you're here for another reading of Captain Frederick Marriott's diary. But before we jump in, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to my 400 plus subscribers. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your support. It really means a lot to me. Because this channel really is all about you. My goal in making these videos is to provide you with a video that makes your day just a little bit better or maybe helps to lift some of the burden off of your shoulders. I know how stressful life can be. And if I can provide a little reprieve from that through these videos, then I consider it a success. So with that in mind, I have been doing a lot of research on how to make better videos for you. So one of the things that I've recently discovered in a book called, oh, what is it called? I think it's called Making Videos That Don't Suck. So in that book, the author recommends that we change frames frequently. He suggests every 10 seconds. However, I feel like 10 seconds is a little bit busy for ASMR, since what we're trying to do is slow down a bit. However, I am absolutely going to employ his advice and am going to move the angles. Mm. It's not frames, it's angles. Okay, so where was I? So you'll notice several new angles in this video. Rather than me just sitting here talking to you, I'm going to move it around a bit. But I'm really curious to know if you really do enjoy this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a poll. And it's only going to have two options. It will be either, yes, I love the angles, keep doing it, or no. I can't stand them. They really don't contribute anything. And that way, I will know whether or not I should continue to take that author's advice and offer several different angles during my videos. Your opinions really are very important to me because, like I said, these videos are all about you. They're for your enjoyment. And if I know what you enjoy, Okay, so on to our reading of Captain Frederick Marriott's diary. Let's see what the good captain has to say. Saratoga Springs. Watering places all over the world are much alike. They must be well filled with company and full of bustle. And then they answer the purpose for which they are intended. A general muster. Under the banner of folly to drive care and common sense out of the field. Like assembly rooms, unless lighted up, and full of people, they look desolate and forlorn. So it was with Saratoga. A beautiful spot, beautiful hotels, and beautiful water. But all these beauties were thrown away, and the water ran away unheeded, because the place was empty. People's pockets were empty, and Saratoga The consequence was that I remained a week there, and should have remained much longer had I not been warned by repeated arrivals. 
that the visitors were increasing and that I should no longer be alone. The weariness of solitude, as described by Alexander Selkirk and the anti-Zimmermans, can surely not be equal to the misery of never being alone. A feeling that your thoughts and ideas rapidly accumulating are in a state of chaos and confusion and that you've not a moment to put them into any lucid order of finding yourself against your will continually in society bandied from one person to the other to make the same bows extend the same hand to be grasped and reply to the same eternal questions until like a man borne down by sleep after long vigils and at each moment aroused to reply you either are not aware of what you do say or are dead beat into an unmeaning smile since I have been in this country I have suffered this to such a degree as at last to become quite nervous on the subject and I might reply in the words of the spirit summoned by Lochiel. Now my weary lips I close. Leave, oh, leave me to repose. It would be a strange account had it been possible to keep one of the number of introductions which I've had since I came into this country. Mr. A introduces Mr. B and C Mr. B and C introduce Mr. D, E, F, and G. Mr. D, E, F, and G introduce Mr. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. And so it goes on, ad infinitum, during the whole of the day. And this to me, who never could remember either a face or a name. At introduction, it is invariably the custom to shake hands. And thus you go on shaking hands here, there, and everywhere, and with everybody, for it is impossible to know who is who in this land of equality. But one shake of the hand will not do if twenty times during the same day you meet a person to whom you have been introduced. The hand is everywhere extended with, Well, Captain, how do you find yourself by this time? And in their good will, when they seize your hand, they follow the apothecary's advice. When taken, to be well shaken. As for the constant query, how do you like our country? That is natural enough. I should ask the same of an American in England, but to reply to it is not the less tedious. It is all well meant, all kindness, but it really requires fortitude and patience to endure it. Everyone throws in his voluntary tribute of compliments and goodwill, but the accumulated mass is too great for any one individual to bear. How I long for the ocean prairies or the wild forests. Subsequently, I begged hard to be shut up for six months in the penitentiary at Philadelphia, but Sammy Wood said it was against the regulations he comforted me with a dinner, which was so agreeable that at the time I quite forgot I wished to be alone. When I left Saratoga, I found no one, as I thought, in the car who knew me, and I determined if possible they should, in the Indian phrase, lose my trail. I arrived at Schenectady and was put down there. I amused myself until the train started for Utica, which was to be in a few hours. And walking about the engine house and examining the locomotives, and having satisfied myself, set out for a solitary walk in the country. There was no name on my luggage, and I had not given my name when I took my ticket for the railroad. At last, I said to myself, I am in cog. I had walked out of the engine house, looked around the compass, and resolved in which direction I would bend my steps, 
when a young man came up to me and very politely taking off his hat said, I believe I have the pleasure of speaking to Captain M. Had he known my indignation when he mentioned my name, poor fellow, but there was no help for it. After apologizing, he introduced himself and then requested the liberty of introducing his friend. Well, if ever, thought I, and no, never, followed afterwards as a matter of course. And as a matter of course, his friend was introduced. It reminded me of old times, when midshipmen at balls, we used to introduce each other to ladies we had none of us seen before in our lives. Well, there I was, between two overpowering civilities, but they meant it kindly. And I could not be angry. These were students of Schenectady College. Would I like to see it? A beautiful location, not half a mile off? I requested to know if there was anything to be seen there, as I did not like to take a hot walk for nothing, instead of the shady one I had proposed for myself. Yes, there was Professor Knott. I had, of course, heard of Professor Knott. Professor Knott, who governed my moral influence and paternal sway, and who had written so largely on stones and anthracite coal. I had never before heard of moral influence, stones, or anthracite coal. Then there were more professors and a cabinet of minerals. The last was an inducement, and I went. I saw Professor Knott not the cabinet of minerals for Professor Savage at the key. With Professor Knott, I had rather a hot argument about anthracite coal and then escaped before he was cool again. The students walked back with me to the hotel and, with many apologies for leaving me, informed me that dinner was ready. I would not tax their any longer, and they departed. Schenectady College, like most of the buildings in America, was commenced on a grand scale, but has never been finished. The two wings are finished, and the center is lithographed, which looks very imposing in the plate. There is a peculiarity in this college. It is called the Botany Bay. From its receiving young men who have been expelled from other colleges and who are kept in order by moral influence and paternal sway. The only means, certainly, by which wild young men are able to be reclaimed. Seriously speaking, Professor Knott is a very clever man, and I suspect this college will turn out more clever men. It differs from the other colleges in another point. It upholds no peculiar sect of religion, which almost all the rest do. For instance, Yale, Williamstown, and Amherst colleges are under Presbyterian influence. Washington, Episcopal. Cambridge and Massachusetts, Unitarian. There is one disadvantage generally attending railroads. Travelers proceed more rapidly, but they lose all the beauty of the country. Railroads, of course, run through the most level portions of the states. And the levels, except they happen to be on the banks of a river, are invariably uninteresting. The road from Schenectady to Utica is one of the exceptions to this rule. There is not perhaps a more beautiful variety of scenery to be found anywhere. You run the whole way through the lovely valley of the Mohawk on the banks of the Mohawk River. It was really delightful, but the motion was so rapid that you lamented passing by so fast. The Utica Railroad is one of the best in America. The 80 miles are performed in four hours and a half. 
stoppages for taking in water, passengers, and refreshments included. The locomotive was of great power, and as it snorted along with a train of carriages at half a mile long in tow, it threw out such shudders of fire that we were constantly in danger of conflagration. The weather was too warm to admit of the windows being closed, and the ladies, assisted by the gentlemen, were constantly employed in putting out the sparks which settled on their clothes. The first time I have ever heard ladies complain of having too many sparks about them. As the evening closed in, we actually were whirled along through a stream of fiery threads, a beautiful, although humble, imitation of the tail of a comet. That's today's reading of Captain Frederick Marriott's diary. I hope you found it soothing and relaxing. And remember, please let me know what you think of the changing frames and angles. If it is something you like, I will absolutely make sure to include it in your future videos. After all, All right, beautiful. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.